western, second western province. It is in uh, oil and gas country, and as a result, it is with Toronto one of the fastest growing areas of Canada. Um, again, on the geography lesson, the the site that we have is uh, colored in pink in the diagram, and it is uh, exposed to the sun uh, most of the year. Alberta is known as a big sky country, so there's a even though the temperature variation is from minus 30 in the winter to plus 35 in the summer, we have. Uh, uh, the building is excessively exposed to sun. And while other speakers have been talking about the extruded shape and how we've modified the extruded shape to improve the sustainability, uh, the, the Bow Project is an effort to actually change the building to suit the sustainability requirements. Just to give you another geography lesson, the Bow title for the uh, for the project is related to the shape of the building, but also just north of the site is the Bow River in Calgary. So we, Halcro Yalis, worked with the uh, design architects, Foster and Partners, their group six, and uh, the executive architects, uh, Zyler Partnership of Toronto and Calgary. And the owner, the initial owner of the building was Incana Corporation. Incana depending on the uh, stock market day, is either the number one or number two company in Canada. It is a oil and gas uh, company with uh, natural gas in uh, most of Ontario, sorry, most of Alberta, and also uh, oil from the tar sands projects. Eventually, in this discussion, in Canada, sold their rights to a, a uh, property REIT corporation, H&R, but they were, as to become the tenant of the building, they were initially part of the ownership dialogue. So we worked with in Canada right from the beginning of the project. And this on the screen is some of the requests of the ownership team for the, uh, what they wanted the project to be. They wanted it to be the second largest building in Canada. The first uh, tallest building is actually in Toronto. There is quite a rivalry between Toronto and Calgary. They wanted it to be a sustainable building. They also wanted it a building to be a building that uh, helped them maintain their staff. Canada is a very big country with a very small population, and a lot of comp companies, excuse me, are related or focused on maintaining their staff. And while many organizations have developed uh, open concept in the oil and gas industry, the, there's a direct tendency to have cellular offices. So the design of the building was actually predicated on this goal of the uh, Incana Corporation. We looked at many shapes for this building, and as you can see, the bow uh, shape is predominant in the uh, design listing. Foster developed this shape from the, their initial thoughts on the Commerce Bank uh, in Frankfurt. And the idea here was to capture that swinging of the sun and create a solar collector at the uh, southwest side of the building. Also, in Canada Corporation, while having a need for cellular offices, is built upon uh, neighborhoods or company business units. So they wanted, as part of their development, to have as many neighborhoods on a floor as possible and stack these neighborhoods to create the business unit. So as a result of the shape and the large floor plate that we were able to get of 34,000 square feet, the, they were able to get 76 10-foot offices per floor. As part of the expanding the neighborhood option into the business unit option, they were looking at compressing the units into various sizes so that they would have a common meeting place so they could exchange ideas. We as the structural engineers looked at a number of schemes to resolve the structural aspects of this from perimeter tubes with uh, 
with closely spaced columns to the eventually diagrid, diagrid on various floor to floors and various numbers of floors. And we ultimately had an architectural layout that uh, resulted in what you see on the screen. It's 59 stories. Originally, they wanted it to be in the order of 70 stories, but it would have presented uh, an issue of shadowing the Bow River, which is just to the north. So the building was squashed to, to restrain the, uh, the shadow on the Bow River. So the building is 240 meters high, 800 and 10 feet, it's the tallest building in Calgary and in Western Canada, second largest office building in Canada. It's occupied solely by Encana, has a, approximately 2 million square feet, a two level lobby space, which ties into the pedestrian plus 15 level, and it has a five and a half below grade uh, parking. Presently, the building it's bottomed out on the site, and we expect to pour the 10-foot thick uh, raft in about two and a half weeks. So structurally, on the north side of the building, at the top of the page, we have an exposed perimeter uh, diagrid. Across through the yellow lines is a truss that links those elements, and across the face of the atrium, we have an exposed diagrid. The two brown areas are linked by a, a finger frame across the, the ends of the, the fingers. And in the lower levels, we have a, uh, a braced core up to the 22nd floor. Now, the reason for the braced core to that level is a phenomenon related to the uh, global buckling of the building. Presently, the nodes are at every six floors, and we found that between these floors, we had a tendency of the building to buckle between the nodes. So we had to introduce, in the lower reaches, a, a core up to the 22nd floor to take those higher forces. And on the other floors, we had a frame, excuse me, a brace frame at the uh, finger core stairs. So this is part of our BIM model of the of the exposed structure showing the diagonal bracing across the atrium. Interesting enough, the, 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 the atrium wall is braced only at floors 24, 42, and 54, where the, there is a garden floor created. These garden floors were selected because of the business units that were fitting in the various 24, 18, and 12 floor spacing of the garden floors. There's a tendency of this atrium diagrid to buckle, but the curved shape of the atrium has facilitated a um, analysis which restrains this. But it does introduce high tension forces across the finger with the tendency of this building to uh, pull together. Another phenomenon that we noticed was a tendency for the building to have dead load bleed into these atrium frames. The, the solution was a logistic one where we decided to build the office portion of the structure and keep the atrium diagrid down about 10, 12 floors so that the, there would be less of a tendency of the dead load to creep or bleed into the atrium elements. If the dead load did bleed into these atrium elements, it would create uh, larger compression forces and uh, compound our slenderness problem. We worked with Foster and Partners and the owner and developed a triangular shape uh, element for the diagrid in the atrium. We looked at round shapes with concrete filled and also considered square box shapes because of the nature of the fire rating of this building, the atrium truss structure had to have a two-hour fire rating. Unfortunately, the ULC, the Underwriters Laboratory Canada, or the UL, did not have uh, sufficient uh, listings for the uh, 
intumescent paint that was proposed, so we undertook separately intumescent paint. These elements are generally four inch thick or 100 millimeter thick plate, approximately 1,100 millimeters uh, deep. Part of the geometry of this atrium diagrid was in order to simplify the cladding design, we used the work point at the face of the cladding. And because of the depth of the cladding and the structure, the triangular grid was not able to have a full closure. We ended up with this infill piece on the inside that compounded our structural issues. This is a view of the atrium looking up with the office uh, floor plates on the right-hand side and the atrium wall. Some of the upper levels, we introduced uh, balconies into this area to uh, facilitate meeting rooms and the like. This part of the building, because of its southwest exposure, creates a buffer zone or a double wall construction in facade terms uh, so that we could vet the, uh, the high temperatures in the summer months but take advantage of the, them in the winter months. Unfortunately, because of this temperature, we have a gradient within the floor, within the atrium itself of 35 degrees Celsius, which in itself introduces temperature forces into the atrium uh, diagrid. This is a view looking down on the atrium diagrid, and in particular, I wanted to show a drag stut, strut, rather, which is needed to pull the atria screen wall into the finger frame. And this is the BIM model of the structure of that, uh, of the diagrid looking from the inside. The brace framing you see beyond is the, uh, is the global buckling uh, bracing that we introduced to, to resolve that issue. This is a more detailed look at some of the connections that occur, and again, that filler plate in the atrium inside. Again, for the structural engineers here, on the left-hand side in red, we show the dead low drift of this building, which compounds the P-delta effect. This is largely because of the offset loading, or the offset core. The, um, the design criteria for in the, in the National Building Code of Canada has an L over 500 interstory drift requirement, but using some negotiation and discussions, we were able to, uh, to take the drift to L over 400, and in some areas, L over 350, by moderately adjusting the curtain wall detail. This slide is a a demonstration of the interstory drift, and I wanted to uh, show this slide because of the noise that you get as a result of the diagrids. And normally this is a fairly uniform curve, but the diagrids have created some of the noise related to it. And this is a, a similar chart, but showing the dead load in red and the, the wind drift reaction to the diagrid. The other as aspect of this building is that we have a very fine uh, deadline. The building has to be open in 2010, and because of this city approval process, we started about six to eight months behind time. So we've had to do a top-down construction. In Calgary, because of the worker shortage, uh, there's very few former contractors and those that have have very low productivity rates. So we, we developed a system of uh, cans, uh, 1,200 millimeter diameter or 1,500 millimeter diameter filled with uh, high strength concrete filled with um, high percentage reinforcing steel to create the columns and they span from the raft at, which top of the raft is at the fifth basement level up to the ground floor which we designed in in structural steel. The construction of this frame relies on st the structural steel trucks 
arriving on the ground floor slab that we just built, there is no street access because as part of this development, we also took out one of the avenues uh, along 6th Avenue in Calgary to expand the basement into the next block where we have a, a second tower planned. This, uh, this presented us with a problem of, of having no site access. So we had to create our own site access. And to develop this detail, we utilized a combination of the steel and concrete. Because the concrete has low productivity, it, it was feared that we would not have enough dead weight in the structure to let the steel go to the roof. Uh, we initially looked at having 24 floors of steel before the ground floor um, was, sorry, the, the lower parking floors were constructed since that time because of uh, unusually cold weather in Calgary this year. We've extended that to 36 stories, with the tower will be 36 stories before we finish the basement construction. And this can detail with its anchorage off the mat is required to hold the building down. And lastly, this is a detail uh, showing the 10 foot thick or three meter thick raft and those anchorage details. Lastly, during the uh, last few months of the, the design, we had, we had released up to 56 floors for, for construction. We were asked to look at modifying the uh, square footage in the building and trying to add another 100,000 square feet. This required us to fill in some of these atrium levels. We haven't received a full decision at this point, but at one time we were looking at the um, suggestion on the right. Interesting enough, because it moves the center of weight out towards the atrium, it introduces new forces into the diagonal grid and compounds our life significantly. Um, we haven't yet heard the resolution of this aspect of the building. So that's all I have to say. Thank you very much.